So I, um, I, I read something in Colossians, uh, actually a long time ago, that still uh, has... You know how sometimes you read something in Scripture and you just don't forget it. It sticks in your brain and it just reverberates throughout your life. Maybe you, you learn about it the first time and then a few months or maybe even a few years later it'll come back to you like a like an echo bouncing off the you know b- bouncing off the wall back at you and um it happens sometimes like that and that's okay that's that's the way scripture was designed um you know it's supposed to come back at us um you know back into our hearts uh and maybe maybe it'll not won't necessarily leave but it'll go into the background and we learn something else in scripture and then a few weeks or a few months later Boy, that memory of that thing that we learned in Scripture comes back to us. And so I thank God for that. And I would like to share with you an echo from Scripture. Uh, uh, one of my echoes from Scripture. If you happen to have your Bibles, please join me in Colossians 2. And if you don't have your Bible with you, remember Colossians 2. Remember, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read that when I get home tonight. It's, it's not very long. You could literally just read straight through it in like not even ten minutes, maybe five minutes. But it might take you longer to get through it because it's one of those meaty portions of Scripture that Paul usually delivers up. You know, he dishes out. Paul doesn't d- dish out skimpy plates of Scripture. He piles that stuff high. And sometimes he gives you two plates or three plates. But we're just going to go through part of Colossians 2. And I would like to start in verse 8. And we're going to go to about 20. So this is going to be one of my typical sit down for 5 or 10 minutes and we're going to hear some scripture. So join me in Colossians 2, 8. Paul says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of of all rule and authority. In him you also were circumcised, circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. Boy, Paul doesn't know how to end a sentence, does he? Okay, so we're going to continue in verse 13. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all of our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. Paul's really getting going after it here. He continues, he says, This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Okay, we're just going to stop there. We, we will go on in a little bit. But I'd like us to just stop there. Now, we just read a lot. And we're not going to go over every word. But I would just like to... I wanted to begin with that. And I'm going to just talk to you about the day I had yesterday. Now, I know. Every time I'm here, I talk to you about, oh, I've had a bad day here, or I've had a good day there, or whatever. I like talking about my day, and I like hearing about other people's days, because in it, we discover our, our spiritual journey, don't we? You know, we look back, you know, sometimes you have a second to think, and you look back and you think, man, I had a really good week last week. Well, then the first thing you think is, why did I have such a good week? Well, it was because of this or that, or, and maybe it can be a bad week. Maybe it can be a bad day. But yesterday, I had a weird day that I would like to share with you. And immediately on the heels of that day, this echo from Scripture came back at me. And it is not a mistake. I am convinced 
that God was saying, here you go, buddy. He's reminding me of, of Scripture here. Now, my day was, was interesting in the sense that it began with a... Uh, right before I woke up, I had a dream. I cannot remember anything about this dream. Does that happen to you? You wake up and you're awake for two minutes and you're like, oh man, I already forgot that dream. It was really good or really bad or something. Apparently that's common. You, you forget dreams really, really fast after you wake up. Well, I don't remember anything about this dream. I remember no details. But I remember it put me off, off kilter a little bit. You ever had something like that happen throughout your day sometimes and it puts you... It just throws you for a loop a little bit. Maybe somebody says something or something happens or something doesn't happen. That dream really just threw me for a loop. I was, as, as I was kind of, you know, waking up and going out about my day and kind of like getting ready and brushing my teeth and all that, I was, I was going through the details of the dream, the few that I could remember. And minute by minute, I was forgetting more and more until finally I was left with no memory of the dream and just this little sort of, kind of, I'll just call it being off kilter. It's hard to describe, but you know what I'm talking about. You know, you just have that thing where uh, something's kind of maybe distracting you, uh, maybe nothing that you can necessarily put your finger on, but that doesn't happen to me. I can never, ever remember that happening to me before. And, you know, I'm not going to put so much stock into it and say, oh, you know, it was God trying to talk to me and I didn't listen, or maybe it was the devil or something. I, you know, a, a dream's a dream sometimes. It's just a weird thing that happens. Uh, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of stock. But I will say uh, it was just the first time that that's happened to me, and it really threw me off. So, you know, whether it was talking with coworkers or dealing with people on the phone or you know trying to remember okay what do I do here or trying to go through the steps of something I just couldn't quite get it right or I was always just a beat slow and that really put me in a bad mood that sort of aggravated me and um, you know you may not be able to understand but uh, as a person who gets aggravated very easily, if I let it, if I let my guard down, uh, you know, the the wind turning a page on my Bible can just go, make me go, Arr, you know. And so that happened to me yesterday. And um, I, you know, I kept my cool. I didn't snap at anybody. And I, I don't think I snapped at you, did I, Adrian? I think we had a pretty good day together, uh, at least after I got off work. And uh, um, but anyway, so there I am, and I don't want to belabor the point and spend a half an hour on it. But I just wanted to to share that with you because you know after I got home later on after after work, and after I was able to just take a minute and sit down, and it was the first time I think. I'm pretty sure it was the first time after work that whole day that I just sat down and thought, wow, I should be giving this to God. You know, instead of kind of being frustrated, being off kilter, or a step behind, or confused here, or whatever, and just putting up with it, and just letting the day wear me down like that, I should have given it to God. Given it up to God, you know? And that's what we do as believers. It's, it's a scriptural thing. Jesus says, hey, cast your cares unto me. It's a command. He doesn't say, ah, if you want to, you can. Either way, we're, we're good. No. He says, cast your cares unto me. He's commanding us. Do it. Let's see what happens. And I'll tell you what happens from my experience. When I give my burdens to Jesus, he takes them. He has never let me down that way. And you know what I'm talking about as, as brothers and sisters of mine. So, when I finally did that last night, 
that's when Paul's words in Colossians began to echo very strongly and right away. Um, I actually had something else planned to talk about tonight. We were going to go back to Matthew, my favorite book. and um, But no. Um, I wanted to, to share with you, uh, again, I'm not going to belabor my the, the details of my day, but I wanted to share with you the the ele- well, let's talk about I wanted to share with you in verse eight specifically. And the message that Paul has for us, uh, this whole chapter, he's got an overall point. but I wanted to, to pull this thing out or at least for us to highlight it, verse eight again. He says, "See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits." Of the world, and another um, thing that uh, another word that this could be would be elemental principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Yesterday, I tried to live according to the elementary principles of this world. I would stop every once in a while throughout the day, and I would just go, "Okay, now that's a good thing to do." To just sometimes we just need to stop and go, hmm, you know? You know what I'm talking about? And maybe we're not having a day that's, where there's a lot of action around us physically, but all it takes is just a lot of stuff going on in your brain or in your heart. And sometimes you just need to stop and go, hmm. That feels good, doesn't it? That feels really good. And... I think God allows us to do that for a reason. He built our bodies to say, hey, you know, just stop and go. But I did that, okay? And okay, it felt temporarily good, but, you know, five minutes later, ten minutes later, I'd be back into my kind of just weird day. And, you know, every once in a while, I even shared with a couple co-workers, I said, "You you know, have you ever had just that weird day, that weird day? Where just everything just seems kind of to be ten degrees off, and yeah, you know they knew. You know everybody has. I think we've all kind of had that to one degree or another. And so I did another thing. And so so I was trying to talk it out. I was trying to share with people. I was trying to maybe just stop and go. Ah, I was on my own power. I had decided I should do all these things to help myself out. When all along I could have been. I could have just stopped. And all it takes is, all you have to do is just talk to God. As you're doing your thing, you don't even have to talk out loud. God, I give this to you. As I'm doing this task or whatever, take it, God, please. Take this and um, allow me some peace here. Because you can deal with it. You know what's going on with me. I don't know. It's yours. Now, this... Obviously, we can do this in any situation. It doesn't have to be some unknown weird day sparked by a weird dream that you had. More realistically, we have days where we know full well what's going on. There's, there's things going on around us. There's things going on in our relationships. Things going on uh, with tasks that we're doing. And we have full knowledge of what's going on. And that's the thing that's wearing us down, right? Because, oh man, not this again. Or, oh man, not another day of this. Or, oh man, what am I going to do about this? But see, Jesus isn't asking us, give it to me only if it's this or that. He says, cast all your cares onto me. In uh, Matthew 5, I believe. 5, yeah, I believe. Matthew, anyway. I know he said that in the Gospel of Matthew. Yes. <laughs> um, but he doesn't discriminate. He doesn't want. He doesn't want a certain kind of thing. Sometimes we hear somebody around us. They'll start talking. We'll say, uh, "Not, not right now. I can't do this right now." But it's the opposite with Jesus. Yeah. It's not only does he want to, he's commanding us to take part in it. He's saying, hey, look, 
He's not saying, if you have cares, cast them onto me. What did he say? He just assumed we have cares, that we have anxiety. Well, that's pretty presumptuous, huh? No. Why? Because Jesus knows us. We always have a wor- we always care about something. We always have anxiety about something to some degree or another. I'm not saying we're all, you know, operating at 10 with anxiety on all cylinders, but but that's a very important mental health note for us. You know? A lot of things can affect our mental health. But I I would just submit to you that casting all your cares unto him would do wonders. And I am speaking from experience. I have been there. And I'm not saying that I have maybe any other challenges that some other person might have, but I'm saying that is square one. That's where you should start. I can guarantee it. Do it before you have to call that therapist or before you maybe have to take that medication. Just do it. Just say it real quick. Just say, Jesus, I cast all my cares onto you. Now, you're probably wondering, what does this have to do with Colossians 2.8, which I will read again, because I'm getting closer here. And I'm going slow on purpose. Colossians 2.8, again. Paul says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits or principles of the world, and not according to Christ. Okay? Paul wants us to make sure that we do it, uh, that when we cast all our cares on him, we're doing it according to Christ. He's saying, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, by the elementary principles or spirits of this world. I had somebody explain to me, and it seems to fit in scripturally quite well, that when Paul is talking about the elemental spirits or the elemental uh, uh, principles of this world, that he's talking about, he, he's being general on purpose, because there are a lot of elementary principles that we operate with in this world, aren't there? Um, or worldly principles. Not necessarily bad in and of themselves, some of them probably so. So let's talk about them. Philosophies, belief systems, religions, um, emotions, I would submit, that an elementary principle of this world, a basic principle of this world, one of them, one of the many of, of them, is emotions. Isn't, isn't that a... a Uh, kind of an uh, elementary or an assumed thing that we all have that's one of the things that makes us human isn't it is that we are emotional creatures and even if we I I would submit that even if we think that we're not that oh I'm I'm a rock I'm an island I'm a stone I'm not emotional at all I would submit to you that you are more in touch with the fact that you have emotions and you are pushing them and you may have been pushing them down so long that who knows what it's going to take but but someday you are just going to blow up and you won't know what's the reason why again i'm speaking from experience i'm i've the older i get the more i try to at least be more in touch with my emotions not you know that we want to go crazy with them whether it's a high or a low but you just want to be in touch with them just to kind of help yourself you know, keep yourself a little level uh, because sometimes we can go a little too high or a little too low. So, again, see to it, Paul says, that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. I allowed myself to be, or maybe I did it myself, but I allowed myself to be captive to the elemental principles of this world yesterday. How did I do that? All I did was one thing. I refused, or I, I guess, I just, for some reason, I just blanked. I don't know what my, what my deal was yesterday, but I didn't even think about God in that context, into thinking, wow, maybe I should give all this to Him. Sometimes we do that, too, you know? I've done it before, and I'm, I'm sure maybe 
Maybe you have a time or two where you just you kind of forget. You're like, wow, you know, man, I I need to be more in touch, like more in the Word or something, you know, just to, just to help us out. Obviously, Jesus helps us out. The Holy Spirit helped me out last night after I got home. I sort of started to unwind and the Holy Spirit started talking. And he said, Hey, do you want to maybe, you want to just take that, put that all in a bag and just hand it to me? So, later on in the chapter, Paul, uh, now I'm in, oh, or I'm still in chapter 2 of Colossians, but I'm just going to skip all the way down to 20. Instead of reading it through, because I don't, I don't want us to go on too long tonight. But Colossians two twenty, Paul continues. He says, "If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world or the elemental principles of the world, why, as if you were st- still alive in, the, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle. Do not taste. Do not touch." according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Now, again, as I stated earlier, Paul has an overall bigger point that we just don't have time to get into tonight. But the fact that Paul is using this phrase, the elementary spirits or the elementary principles of this world, is very intriguing. And it's, you know, you could preach 20 sermons out of this passage. Easily. Easily. I can see probably 10 offhand. But this phrase, the elementary principles of this world, is something to remember as we as we walk through every day as we go to work as we come to church as we talk to people as we sit and meditate on God or uh, regardless what we're doing if we're driving pay attention to the road of course but we can but we we have the the knowledge that okay you know Jesus uh, it, it can be said many different ways. Uh, Jesus said, "Be in the world, but not of the world." Okay. So as we walk, we're walking in the world, but we know we're not we're not of the world. We're not from here, really. Okay. We know that. We can be reminded of that. Another way, uh, or another aspect of that, is to remember that there are elementary principles basic principles of our earthly existence okay such as being human okay being a part of our uh, uh, when we express uh, a our fallenness which humans do quite often one of the ways that that comes out is not giving things to God that God wants from us give me your anxieties I would submit that God wants our everything, obviously. But sometimes we think, oh God, I give you everything. Oh, except that little room over there where I keep my anxieties. I don't want you to have that yet. It's okay that you know it's there, I suppose, but we're just going to go with this for now. You know, we try to talk God into a certain... But the idea that that there are basic principles or worldly or uh, elemental principles in this world should not um, should not deceive us into thinking that there's not more. Why? Because Paul knows just like Jesus that, hey, you're in the world, of course. We know that we're in the world. We're reminded of that every day. Yes. So, Paul here is echoing kind of a, a, a bit of a different aspect to what Jesus was saying in John. Um, when he said, "Be in the, the world, not of it," I I want to submit to you that that basically everything I do, I'll share from experience that everything I do is 
is, is going to have one of two outcomes. Okay? If I, if I have a weird dream that throws me off one morning, or if I have stress about some, something that's going on in my life, and anxiety, or if I have hatred in my heart, okay? Or if I have, you know, we could go on, okay? I know we could go on because I know you're human as much as I am, okay? And so, obviously, the question isn't if. The, the, the statement is, well, because I had a weird dream this morning that's throwing me off, or because I might have hatred in my heart. I don't think I do. Um, or because of this, because of that, it's nice to be reminded, uh, like Paul says in verse 8, therefore, as you have received Christ, excuse me, this is verse 8. I just almost read verse 6. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental principles of this world, and not according to Christ. So he's saying, uh, actually that reminds me of uh, Hebrews 4. Uh, 4.10, I believe. Paul is saying, or excuse me, the author of Hebrews, we don't know if it was Paul, but the author of Hebrews said, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Meaning, every thought that we have, just give it to God. Every thought. Well, God, I'm just thinking about my grocery list. Give it to God. He knows. I'm not kidding. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The mental picture that I get is somebody having a thought, and it's like a physical thing. Okay. Now, we know thoughts aren't physical things. But just say I have something physical. Here's my thought, Lord. I'm going to bow before you and I'm going to give it to you because you're, just say God's right here standing in front of me. Okay? There is no, there is no greater... Um, my knees. Okay. There is no greater uh, act of submission than to bow before someone. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You know, if it's your grocery list or if it's anything, anxieties, cares, give it to give it to Christ for being obedient to him. Giving it to him. Um so yeah, already Paul has been connected with Jesus and the author of Hebrews. Um, gosh, I don't want to go on too long. But honestly, because this wasn't a... I wasn't planning on talking about this and this wasn't prepared, it's not going to sound awesome. Like, here's my three-point outline and here's my beautiful capstone ending. Bam! I just wanted to share with you that these elementary principles are there. They're not going to sneak up on you. They've always been there. They've been there our whole lives. They're going to be there tomorrow when we wake up. Our emotions, our memories, our philosophies that we have, our religions that we have, that we keep, uh, our thought life. Did I say our emotions? I did. I said it again. Because, again philosophies, emotions, the things that we're involved in in this world. Politics? Goodness. Man, I had no idea when I was a kid that I would grow up to the 21st century and here we are. It's like brutal. It's brutal. That's all I'll say. I need to shut up. Okay. There's lots of things. It's it's not just politics. It's, it's social issues. It's this, it's that. They're up and they're down, and um, it's crazy, you know. Sometimes you just want to what? Give every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and remember and see to it that no one takes me captive. Paul's going to write to me right now. Paul's going to write to me. 
Casey, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, according to the elemental patterns of spirits or principles of this world, and Casey, not according to Christ. Okay? I just heard that for myself. And I wanted you to hear that for you, too. 